There is no doubt about it. Bringing a new product to market is an up and down roller coaster. And in this video, I'm going to share with you my own story behind my worst, most devastating day on my journey to bring my own product to market. But first, to give you some context, I'm going to start with my most exciting day of my journey, which was then followed a few months later by my most terrifying day. And then finally, I'll share with you my absolute worst day. Hi, I'm John Teal. I'm the founder of Predictable Designs, and I'm an electronics engineer and an entrepreneur who brought my own product to market. It was back around 2007 that I developed and brought my own consumer product to market. And my product was a miniature lighting device that illuminated any surface that it was attached to. You simply would press on the top and then it would pop up and shine light downward onto the surface that it was attached to. And my product was a really low cost product that wasn't financially feasible to sell online. So most of my focus was on building a network of retail stores that sold the product. I self-funded everything until I was able to get to the point of having a decent prototype. And let me just be honest, my prototype was not perfect, but it was good enough to start showing to potential customers. Don't ever wait for your prototype to be perfect because you need to get something out there for feedback as soon as possible. And I just, I see way too many people that keep delaying seeking feedback on their product, partially because they're scared, but also because they mistakenly think that they need a perfect market ready prototype before they can start showing potential customers. My prototype was by no means perfect or ready to be man mass manufactured. In fact, it was still quite ugly and it was just a prototype created using 3D printing technology. I just, all I did was I would explain to retailers and manufacturers that I had a prototype and not a finished product. And they were typically pretty understanding of that. One of the many applications of my miniature lighting device was putting it on your remote control when watching TVs or movie in the dark and you would just press the top of it, it would pop up and shine down to illuminate the buttons on the remote control. And you know, keep in mind, this was back when most remote controls lacked effective illumination and were pretty much unusable in the dark. One of the retailers I focused on the most was Blockbuster Video. You, you do remember Blockbuster Video, right? This was quite a few years ago, back when Blockbuster Video was a huge internationally known company. And one of the main reasons that I focused specifically on Blockbuster is that I knew unlike a more general merchandiser like a Walmart or a Target, I knew that Blockbuster probably was not constantly being pitched new products. So I figured it was probably a little bit easier uh, to differentiate myself and get my foot in the door. And I really encourage you to do the same thing, to try to identify some strategic companies that may not be pitched as many products as a general merchandise. So how did I make a, a connection at Blockbuster Video? Well, first I started, I found the email addresses for several of their vice presidents. And then I decided to reach out to their vice president of purchasing since he seemed like the most likely decision maker. So I sent this VP of purchasing a really short email and I cannot stress enough how critical it is that you make this first email super short, just a few sentences at the most. In addition to just the short email, I also attached an image of a flyer that I had made, which featured a, prod, a picture of my prototype actually being used on a remote control. Well, the next day he replied, and all he said was simply, quote, looks interesting, tell me more. Those five simple words sent me to the moon that day. Man, you would have thought I won the lottery. I was so excited. To have a top executive at a multi-billion dollar retail company tell me my product looks interesting was a huge jolt of energy for me. And although there were many other exciting positive events that happened later in my journey to market, this was definitely my most exciting day. But a few months later, I experienced by far the most terrifying day of my journey to market. The Blockbuster vice president connected me up via email with their head corporate buyer to discuss it further. And a few days later, I was in communication with their head buyer who was in charge of the merchandise carried by all the thousands of Blockbuster video locations at that time. 
I then spent the next couple of months improving my prototype and constantly playing phone tag with the blockbuster buyer who was almost impossible to ever catch on the phone. My immediate goal was to get just an in-person meeting with him to present my product. Finally, a couple months later, I secured a meeting with him at their corporate headquarters in Dallas, Texas. I was thrilled, but I was also terrified. Keep in mind, at that time, we were living in a small town in Alaska called Homer, where I did remote contract design work for Texas Instruments. So going from my relaxing, rather secluded life in Alaska to presenting my product to a billion dollar company in a huge city was a huge shock to my system. You talk about being taken outside your comfort zone. I was as far outside my comfort zone as I could possibly get. It did help some that I used to live in Dallas when I worked at Texas Instruments, so I knew the area. But Blockbuster, they were located downtown, which I rarely ever visited, and they just happened to be at the very top of a very tall skyscraper making the whole event even that more intimidating for me. Honestly, I didn't sleep more than probably just a few minutes the night before my presentation, and I was pretty much sick to my stomach almost the entire trip. Well, at least until I was done with my presentation, and then magically my stomach ache uh, disappeared. Needless to say, I was not operating at my best, and this was definitely the most terrifying day of my entire journey to market. Fortunately, I, I must have done okay, and they were still interested, and the buyer requested that I send him an updated prototype once I had it available. Well, a few months later, I finally had a close-to-market ready prototype, although it was still just only 3D printed. And by this time, the original head buyer at Blockbuster had been replaced by someone new. And this new buyer was quite a bit more challenging to deal with, and he wasn't nearly as friendly as the first buyer, and he was rather blunt with his feedback. He requested that I send him an updated sample, which I was happy to do since I was confident that he would be even more impressed once he, once he actually used my product. So I quickly sent him the 3D printed prototype and I was so anxious and excited to hear his reaction to my product, crossing my fingers that Blockbuster would help me make my dreams come true. The buyer, well, he, re he received the sample and it was finally time to talk to him on the phone. I was excited, but I was also really nervous. I had put so much of myself into this product and so I was really nervous to get his feedback. Well, once I got him on the phone, his response, let's just say, was not what I hoped for. I remember vividly the chills running down my back, and I can feel them now just retelling this story. When, he, when I asked him what he thought of the prototype, his blunt answer was, quote, I think it's awkward to use. I was speechless and completely devastated by that response. How dare he talk about my baby like that? I couldn't understand why he thought it was awkward to use and I had already shared my product with lots of people for feedback and no one had ever told me that. Honestly, and I'm not gonna lie, I teared up a bit that day. It was, it was a really, really rough day. And that was by far the worst day of my entire journey to market. Thankfully, the story does not end there. After a day or two of wallowing in my self-pity, I decided to go back and figure this out. I did some research and talked more with this bu the buyer at Blockbuster and I did my own experiments and I ultimately discovered exactly what had happened. I had sent him a 3D printed prototype made of a resin that does not respond well to high temperatures. And I had shipped him the prototype to Dallas, Texas in the middle of a summer heat wave. What had happened is the prototype had set in, a, in high heat and warped or just partially melted but it didn't melt enough to be immediately obvious to the buyer who had never seen the product before. But the prototype plastic had melted just enough to make the product really awkward to turn on and off. And I, I mention this because it was critical that I eventually push through this obstacle. I worked with the buyer even though I was devastated and he was very accepting. He knew it was a prototype and not a production unit and I was able to eventually work past this to eventually get a letter of intent from Blockbuster, expressing their written interest in my product. I'd achieved my goal, that's exactly what I wanted. The deliverable that I wanted from my first interactions with Blockbuster 
was merely this letter of intent stating their written interest in my product. Well, uh, you know, a purchase order would have been much better, but that's extremely rare without having actual inventory ready to ship and my product was not quite ready to be manufactured yet. My goal for this stage was merely to get their written interest in my product. And I was then able to leverage this letter to get a manufacturer to invest over $100,000 in helping me get my product finalized and set up for manufacturing. And then I was also able to leverage it to build a team of 20 independent sales representatives who agreed to present my product to various large national retailers. By the way, if you enjoyed this video, then be sure to also watch this video here where you will discover how to determine if your product idea is really any good. And also watch this video here where I reveal all of the costs required to develop, manufacture, and sell a new electronic product.